I'm going to derive the equation for you. How do you find the distance between points? It's nice to see what, where it came from. And once you see it, one, I don't care if you want to derive it or not, but it's, it's a good idea to see how we came up with that equation. So let's say we have two points. Here's, let me draw a line here. X-axis and Y-axis. And let's say we have this line, or these points here. I want to find the distance between them. Well, if I call the first point, point 0.1, PT1, that's point 0.1, this is what? This is the X value for point 0.1, and this is the Y value for point 0.1. If I call this point, point 2, this is the x value for point 2. This is the y value for point 2. If I make a triangle out of that, if I go ahead and make a triangle right here, right triangle, can you see the red color there? What is the distance from here to there? In terms of x2 and x1. x2 minus x1. Good. It's x2 minus x1. It's this x value minus that one. And what's the height here? In terms of the y's. Same thing. y2 minus y1. Yep. y2 minus y1. Good. Remember Pythagorean's theorem? Pythagorean theorem says if we call this side c, and this is a and this is b, it says c squared equals what? a squared plus b squared. Well, c here, or c squared, well, I'll leave it there for now. I'll just go c squared. c squared equals, what is a here? x2 minus x1 and square it. And what is b here? Yep, y2 minus y1 square it. And if you want to find C, what do you do? How do you find C? Square root, sure. You square root both sides. Isn't actually C the distance between the two points? So that's the equation for the distance between two points. The distance is defined as the square root of x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared. So let's take an example. Find the distance between the point 3 and negative 1 and the other one is negative 2 comma negative 5. So I got two points. Which one is point 1? Which one is point 2? doesn't really matter. You can call either one. I can call this point one or I can call that point one. So which one do you want to be point one? The first or the second? First, okay. So this is point one. That means this is point two. The three is the x value of point one. That's why it's called x sub one. The x value of point one. The negative one is y sub one. The negative 2 is the x value of 0.2, and the negative 5 is the y value of 0.2. So the distance between them now, between these two points, is going to be y2 minus y1. What's y sub 2? 
or let me put the X. By the way, which one you write first doesn't matter. Sometimes you see the Y is written first, now there you see the X. Because when you add something, 4 plus 5 is the same as 5 plus 4. So what's X sub 2 here? Negative 2 minus what's X sub 1? 3. And what's Y sub 2? Negative 5 minus what is Y sub 1? Negative 1. That becomes a plus 1, right? What's negative 2 minus 3? Negative 5 squared, positive 25. What's negative 5 plus 1? Negative 4 squared, 16. So the answer is the square root of what, 41? If it says give the exact answer, that is your exact answer. Leave it the way it is. If it says simplify or round to three decimal places, two decimal places, then you go to your calculator, you push the button on it. Since that's a cheap one, I'll hit the 41 first. 41, let's try it again. And hit the square root. 6.403. Again, if I reverse them, it won't make any difference. If I did the y first, the x first won't take, make any difference. If I made this point 0.1, this is point 0.2, my answer is still going to be the same, regardless. So that's finding the distance between two points. I'll do that just to show you it really doesn't matter if I reverse them or not. So I'm going to repeat the same example. between 3 and negative 1 and negative 2 and negative 5. Again, this time I'm going to make this one point 0.1 and this one point 0.2. x2, y2, x1, y1. plus y2 minus y1 squared. Okay. What's x sub 2 here? 3 minus a minus, that's plus. y sub 2 is negative 1 minus a minus plus 5 squared. 3 plus 2, 5 squared, 25. Negative 1 plus 5, 4 squared, 16. The answer is the same exact answer. Same as before. So again, don't lose sleep over which one is point 0.1, which one is point 0.2. Doesn't matter. The answer will be the same. The other topic in this section is the slope. We'll go back to that picture in a second. There we go. Let me try this one again. There's my two points. Let me make my triangle quickly. We said this is x sub 2 minus x sub 1, right? And this is y sub 2 minus y sub 1. 
I don't know why the two on the top, not. Let's go back to Trig. I know you all like it so much. What's the definition of slope? The, yep, the rise over the run. Which is what? Y sub 2 minus Y sub 1 over X sub 2 minus X sub 1. If I call this angle theta, What is the tangent of theta? Y over X. Yep, the opposite over that Jason, right? Which is the right sign, but I'm looking for the side. It's the opposite side over that Jason. And what is the opposite side in this picture? Y2 minus Y sub 1. And what's the adjacent side? Hey, what do you know? Aren't these two the same? So guess what? The slope is nothing more than tangent theta. So if you know the slope, you know what the angle is. If you know what the angle, you know what the slope is. It's the tangent of that angle. Now, while we add it, The previous example, let's go back. We had the two points were what? Negative three. It was three and negative one. So we have a line, a line passes, a line passes through, three and negative one. And what was the other point? Negative 2 and negative 5? Yeah. Okay. Find the angle. Find the angle that line makes with the x-axis. Well, we knew what the slope is. The slope is what? The slope is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. We did that twice. Where was it? We did it twice. I oh, know we didn't do a slope, right? Sorry, we can't. That was the distance. I need my coffee. What's my slope here? y sub 2 minus y sub 1. So if this is point 1, this is the x value of point 1, this is y sub 1. If this is point 2, this is the x value of point 0.2, that's y sub 2. So my slope is going to be negative 5 minus a negative 1, that means plus 1, over negative 2 minus 3. Negative 4 over what? Negative 5, isn't that a point 0.8? Now, I know tangent theta is equal to 0.8. What is theta? It's the inverse tangent of 0.8. So go to your calculator now. What's the inverse tangent of 0.8? Is it 38.7 degrees? So that line that passes through these two points makes an angle 38.7 or, remember, the tangent has two values. We have to look and see which one's the correct one. If you remember my saying what? All stores take cash. The tangent is positive in this quadrant and in this quadrant. 
So we know one of them is 38.7. But if you look at the line, isn't the line the same one? So it's really not going to make a difference here if I get the other angle or not. The tangent has two answers, but they make a straight line. So the slope is not going to change. The angle is not going to change. Because I'm not going from this. That line goes from negative infinity to plus infinity. So I don't have to worry about it. I'm not going just from the origin down or from the origin up. It's a line that's going all the way through. So my angle is going to be 38.7. If I did the other angle, it's still going to be the same line. So I don't have to find that second angle. Now, a couple more topics left in that section. And that is, one of them is, what do we know about parallel lines? Good. What about in terms of slope? Yep. It says parallel lines, the distance between them is the same. Absolutely correct. That's what you told me. So if I do, I'll take a red and blue line. This is one of them. That's line one. And I try to eyeball it to make sure the distance stays the same. That looks good, huh? This is line two. They never cross each other. The distance between them always the same. But in terms of the slope, you know you have parallel lines because what? So line one is parallel to line two. That's how we write parallel. Or if line one is parallel to line two, then the slope for the first line must equal the slope for the second line. In English, parallel lines have the same slope. So you don't have to graph them to see if the two lines are parallel or not. Just calculate the slope for each one and see if the slope is the same. If it is, you get parallel lines. Let's say we have two lines. I'll give you an example. Line one passes through. The point. Three and negative five. And the other point and negative 2 and 4. Line 2 passes through four and negative 8 and uh, negative 6 and 10. Can you tell me, is line one parallel to line two? Is line one parallel to line two? Question mark. On the second part, there, um, there's a difference of four. Yeah. Difference of four here, too? I mean, the top and the bottom. Negative two and four, and negative six and ten. Oh. Oh, that's actually uh. Don't worry about Ricardo. He's into like differences and sequences. He likes that stuff. Let's look at line one. X sub one, Y sub one, if we call this point one. X sub two, Y sub two. I'll use red for line one. Line one has a slope M equals Y sub two minus Y sub one over what? x sub 2 minus x sub 1. 
And what is y sub 2? 4 minus a minus plus 5 over negative 2 minus 3. 4 plus 5 is what? 9 over what? Negative 5. That's negative 9 over 5. Line 2, I'll use blue for that. This is x1, y1, x2, y2. Line 2, what is the slope for it? It's y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. 10 minus a minus, that's plus 8 over negative 6 minus 4. What's 10 plus 8? 18 over negative 10. I know it's a negative. Can I simplify 18 over 10? 9, 9 over 5. Are these slopes the same? Yes. Same slope? Yes, parallel. That means line one is parallel to line two. That's how we know if two lines are parallel or not. Notice I didn't have to graph either one. I don't want to graph them. And the last thing in this section Beside what comes after parallel usually? Perpendicular. Perpendicular lines. What does perpendicular mean? They cross each other at what angle? At 90 degree. Exactly. At 90 degrees. Again, I'll draw a picture. So one of them could look like this. And the other one will look like this one. 90 degree angle, cross at 90 degree. So this is line two, and the red one is line one. So we know their slopes cannot be the same. As a matter of fact, when the, the function is rising, as you go from left to right, if the function is rising, this has a positive slope. As you go left to right, if the function is falling, this has a negative slope. So what's a positive times a negative? Negative. negative. So. so here's where you find out when you have lines are perpendicular. <clears throat> if line 1 is perpendicular to line 2, that's the shortcut of writing perpendicular, upside down T, then if you take the slope of the first line, you multiply it by the slope of the second line, the result is always what? Negative 1. Always. If you multiply the two slopes, the answer is minus 1. If you look at it mathematically, you can say the second slope is what? Negative 1 divided by the first slope. So a lot of times you hear me say, flip and change the sign. If you know the slope for one and you're looking for the slope for the second one, flip and change the sign. So if one of them has a slope, let's say of two thirds, you want the other one to have a slope of what if they are perpendicular? Okay. Flip and change the sign, that'll be what? 
negative 3 over 2. Why? When you multiply them, what are you going to have? Negative 6 over 6, which is what? Negative 1. If 1 has a slope of negative 1 fifth, the other one is going to have a slope of what? Flip and change the sign. 5 over 1, which is 5. If you multiply them, that's also a negative 1. If one has a slope of negative 7 fourth, the other one will have a slope of what? Flip and change the sign 4 over 7. And when you multiply, that's a negative 1. Instead of going, let me multiply and make a minus 1. Find the slope for the first one. Find the slope for the second one. Just say, if I, if I flip and change the sign, do I have that one? I don't have to multiply them. You could also multiply them out. So let's take an example on perpendicular, then this section is done. Line one passes through Uh, let's see the point three negative five and two and negative seven line two passes through four and negative six and Two and negative five. And now I need to know if they're parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Again, I'll use red for line one. So this is x one. This is y1, this is x2, this is y2. Let's see what the slope is for the first one. Negative 7 minus a minus, that's plus 5, over 2 minus 3. The answer is 2. Second line. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Let's call this x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2. Negative 5 minus a minus, that's what? Plus 6 over x sub 2, which is 2 minus what? 4. What's negative 5 plus 6? What's 2 minus 4? Notice that the 2 is 2 over what? 1. If you flip and change the sign, do you have this one? They are perpendicular. If you take 2 or 2 over 1 and multiply it by 1 over negative 2, you will have 2 over negative 2, which is a minus 1. Yes, line one is perpendicular to line two. Done. So the first section, 